One of the problems that we had in the editing and story crafting part of uh, making a VR a documentary on the brink of famine was that we found that people often didn't register voiceover as um, coming from the character that is someone in front of them that they're seeing. It's something that we use often in regular documentaries and in other forms of video uh, where a character may be talking but they're doing something else and their lips aren't ac actually moving. Um, and so we thought that we could use it that way in VR and some, for some reason it, uh, people would often get confused. They say, I see this person here in front of me and she is talking about uh, something that happened to her, but uh, but her lips aren't moving, and that was really confusing. And so we couldn't figure out why that wasn't working for people. But one of the ways that we got around it was having people introduce themselves to camera before they went into the voiceover. So someone actually engaging with the camera or with a viewer, breaking that fourth wall and saying, hello, this is who I am, and this is where we are and what we're doing. And then once they've met the character in that way, um, then if they switch over to voiceover, it uh, tends to be less confusing. One of the biggest challenges we faced in virtual reality filmmaking is how do you move the camera? Typically you might use a crane or a jib, but obviously in 360 you're going to see that. So we had to build a custom motion control camera movement system to move the 360 degree camera through various environments, allowing the viewer to look up and down and all around them without seeing a crane or a jib or a dolly. We're excited about this product and we're going to bring it to the marketplace later this year. So one of the biggest problems that we've ever encountered was trying to tell non-fiction stories but with computer-generated characters. And I have to say, at first, I was really nervous about putting characters in who didn't look exactly like real people. But what I found is if the story is done right, you can create the same impact as if a person is standing right next to you. And I think it's that sense of presence. One of the mistakes that we made when we were first creating immersive environments was just how very different CGs look in those environments. So text, uh, every time we put text inside the sphere, it warped and it looked like this and it looked uh, just distorted and we couldn't figure out how to manipulate inside that sphere. Well, the solution was that was special software. There's software like Metal and Skybox. There's software out there like Dashwood VR tools that can help you put that text into the sphere so it doesn't look warped. There are a lot of problems uh, I've encountered with my students in VR storytelling. Um, it could be movement and having people walk from one camera to another crossing a scene. Um, another thing is trying to figure out what makes a good shot. What justifies a 360 shot? Um, and as cheesy as it might be, the, the best way we've, we've learned to address that and to solve that is by experimentation, trial and error, going out there and trying to figure out what makes a good shot, and how we put and position a camera so action can occur, but it's at a certain distance that it doesn't affect the parallax uh, and the scene. Um, most of our challenges has been through stitching when we're working on 360 video, and there's no beautiful solution there except for long hours and occasional tears. Uh, just stitching and doing your best. Uh, we use Autopano uh, uh, from Color, which is now owned by GoPro, and there are techniques where you can slice the, um, the timeline to change different hotspots and blurs and, and effects uh, to minimize what's called the ghosting effect. Um, you know, for us, we're not really doing it right unless things are on fire. Uh, there needs to be, holy crap, how are we going to solve this problem moment in every step of the way of this type of production. Why? Because there is no one way or one easy answer. It is just trial and error and frustration and, and trying to figure it out without losing focus of two things, that we're moving forward and that we're telling a story.